What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the Fighting Game Tutorial Series, we are going to be going over the Crumple status effect. So Crumple is when you hit your opponent and they fall to the ground kind of slowly, that way you can potentially combo them, hit them again, or just prepare your next move. So I've assigned it to my light attack, and I am working with the Mixmo animations, so I have basically two animations mixed together that do this, but essentially the character should fall to their knees and then fall to the ground. The hitboxes should also change while they are doing this, which we're gonna go over in this episode. So it will change depending on the state they're in. They will have different hurt boxes for standing, kneeling, and on the ground. I'm very excited about this episode because although it is quite similar to a lot of the episodes we've done, this is the last combo state on the list that we have mentioned that's been on there from the beginning that I have not gotten to, so now we're finally going to knock that out. Of course, we will have a lot of move-specific ones like we did with the Scorpion episode, but those are quite different, and each one of those is unique and fun to work on, so I'm glad to have this last one wrapped up. Now, before we hop into the episode, if you want to check out everything else we've done in this series, you can click this link in the top right corner right here and see how we've done the match flow, our projectiles, and all sorts of other cool things. Alternatively, if you just care about the crumple status effect, I would recommend watching this episode right here, which is where we initially went over some of our combo states. So you can see how we set up the other ones in case any of those are of use to you. I'd also love to give a huge thank you to the YouTube membership and Patreon members and supporters. Thank you guys so much for all the love and support and for keeping this channel and this series going for so long. Really so grateful for you and thank you again. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, you can click this link in the top right corner right here and check out all the benefits you're seeing on the screen. But with all that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started on the episode. We want to start out by going into the code. And specifically, I want to go to my fighter template character.h, or essentially my base character.h file. In here, I have an enum e combo state that we covered previously in the series. And it has all sorts of different states for different stuns, bouncing, hard knockdown, recovery. Now, I have also added the e underscore crumple combo state, and that is what we're covering today. So make sure you have a combo state ready for this value, for this state. And once you have that, you're good to go in the fire template character.h. We're going to want to make sure that our hitboxes can apply this effect, can apply that combo state. And so if we go to hitbox actor.h, we can go to where our variables are. And I went to where I had some of my other state related booleans on my hitbox, such as should cause hard knockdown, should cause daze. And I've added a new one now, should cause crumple. And as it says, should this hitbox be able to crumple the opponent? I've given it the same U property as all the other parameters in this file, but essentially we just make it U property edit anywhere, blueprint read write. This allows us to edit it and access it in the blueprint, and then a category of hitbox just so we know where to look. And it is a boolean called should cause crumple. These are all part of a structure within the hitbox actor.h, so you don't have to set them in the constructor. You can see I don't do that here. After we've done that, we want to go back to the fire template character.h now because we want to make sure that when our character gets hit by a hitbox that will cause crumple, we inflict that state upon them. And to do this, we want to go to our take damage function. So I'm going to scroll down to it. And it has a very long parameter list right now because it essentially has all of our hitbox parameters. And I'm going to add a new one. So here's my list. You can see I've added should cause crumple right here. I put it right after should cause days, but it doesn't really matter where you put it in here. The only reason that the order matters in this case is because the parameters in this function have some default values toward the end. So they don't all have default values. When you're in C++, when you're making a function, optional parameters are parameters that have default values, so you don't have to pass them in. They have to be at the end. So I have some other ones in here like should ignore damage decay, should ignore hit stun decay, should cause day, should cause hard knockdown, and hit sound. All of those are default parameters, so I have to put it somewhere within that list. I can't put it at the front of the parameter list, so just make sure that you put it somewhere in here. Bool should cause crumple equals false. And I've just put it to false because we don't want to cause crumple by default. When we attack, most of our attacks and moves won't cause crumple. We want to manually set it when we are going to do that. 
And now that we've updated take damage, we want to go to our fighter template character.cpp and scroll down to take damage as well. Here's take damage. In the parameter list in the CPP file, we need to add this parameter as well. Make sure you put it in the same spot you did in the header file. So I put it after should cause days. And here it is. Note, you don't have to put the optional parameter values in the CPP file like you do in the header file. So you don't have to say equals false or anything like that. And now when we take damage, we will be able to say, yes, this move should cause crumple that we got hit by. So we want to set our state to be in the crumple combo state. Now take damage is huge if you've been following the series. There's a ton in here. Let's go through the function and determine where we want to actually trigger the crumple. So first of all, the crumple should only be triggered if the character that received the attack does not block the attack. That's the first thing we want to check for. So going through our logic, we make sure we can get the game mode. And as long as we're not in some sort of state where the round is over or the match is over, we can go ahead and keep going in here. And as long as we are not in a super right now, we check to see if we block or not. This if statement returns true if the character could not successfully block the attack. So this is where we would want to apply our crumple. There's still a lot of logic in this particular section, but we don't care if it happens on counter hit or not. So we can skip this if and else go to the bottom. Here's where we're getting our hit sound. Here's updating our super meter amount. Here's determining if we were defeated from the hit. We are setting our should hard knockdown variable here, damage effects, number of stun frames received. And then we get into an if statement where we were checking to see if we could daze the opponent or not. Even if you don't worry about the days or you don't have days in your game, you should have some sort of stun states like this, where we call begin stun and check the number of stun frames to set our combo state into the proper stun. Since I don't want to have the actual stun frames related to the crumple, but instead have crumple have its own animation like I did with the days, I put it above that. I just decided that I had this own priority order. So days comes first. If the move is going to daze, we're going to daze them first. If the move is going to crumple, we're going to crumple them next. And if neither of those, then we go into the regular stun states. I added an else if after the should cause days and just check if the Boolean passed in this function should cause crumple is true. If it is, we're going to set the character's combo state to be E combo state colon colon E underscore crumple because at this point they've been hit by that move and we're ready to put them in that state. At this point, we want to scroll down to our end stun function. That is when our stun finishes. So scroll down to end stun. In end stun, we're resetting our character state back to the default after their combo state has ended, basically after their stun frames have run out. And in here, we check to see if there's certain combo states that we're not in, because even if you run out of stun, they might be animation dependent, such as the launch, the knockdown, the recovery, the wall bounce, ground bounce, daze, and crumple. So I've added this just to make sure it fits in here, because I want the crumple to be animation dependent. Of course, if you prefer to make it based off the number of stun frames and not based off the crumple, that is very easy to do. You can speed this up and set the play rate based on those number of frames like we did for our regular stun animations. So we just have a lot of variety here, but you can mold this to be what you want in your game. We also wanna make sure that if we check for any other combo states before doing actions, such as our days or hard knockdown states, we wanna add the crumple to that list as well. So what I recommend doing is pressing Control F to find, and we just wanna say E combo state colon colon and I'm going to use E underscore dazed but again you could use your hard knockdown or other states like that I'm going to find where we use it I only use it in the end stun function but it is important that you may see other instances of this so make sure that if you do you take care of them as well that is everything that we need to do in the code so we can launch the editor when we are ready and we're going to want to go into our you and hitbox data are really your data tables with your hitbox data for all your characters. You will want to go to every move that can cause crumple, click on the row, and then set that should cause crumple boolean. So before I was using my light attack, hitbox 2, which is my strike hitbox for that attack, to cause daze, but I've disabled that and I've just triggered the should cause crumple. So when I land a hitbox with this parameter on it, set to true then the other character will go to the crumple state. 
after you've set up some moves with that parameter on it, we can go into our animation blueprint because we're going to need to pass that data along when we spawn the hitbox to the actual hitbox actor that we create. So let's go into the event graph. And in here, we can go to the particular move that we're going to use, or really you should do it on all moves. But for this example, we just need our light attack, which is where I have set the hitbox to be able to crumple. So you can see light attack hitbox two, that's the one that we were editing. And essentially the way my system works is I have this animation that will create this hitbox when this anim notify fires. Once we do that, we grab all the data of the row from that hitbox and pass it along to the actual hitbox actor that we create so that it has all the data. The first example here is an active hitbox. This is a strike hitbox. Active hitbox and strike hitbox are the same thing in this case. So if I click on my create active hitbox, I should have all these parameters. I've added a new parameter and called it should cause crumple and then I press the up arrow to just align it with where I want it to be, just for organization purposes. And so once you do this, your break hitbox data will have a should cause crumple parameter on it. You may have to click on the node, go to the details panel, and then check as pin to actually get it to display. Otherwise it will look like this, and that's not good because we can't drag anything into it. So make sure you press that pin and pass that should cause crumple and this should cause crumple. Again, this was one particular case, but really you'll want to do this for all the cases that you have. You see, this is a heavy charge active. Now, I might not cause crumple on this attack. However, the whole point of these data tables is that I can change the values and they will be reflected in the game. So for example, I should pass should cause crumple into should cause crumple here as well. All right, so there we go. Now we have the data coming from the data table and coming into the create active hitbox function, let's go into the create active hitbox function. In here, we spawn a hitbox actor and we do a bunch of logic to set all the parameters correctly. A new one is we want to set the members in the hitbox data. That is the structure that we added the should cause crumple boolean to in the code earlier in this episode. And to do that, we want to click on our set members in hitbox data, check should cause crumple as a pin. And then we want to pass it in from the parameter list into here. So I have should cause crumple, which is this line that I'm highlighting right here. And you can see when I do that, it goes directly into the should cause crumple on the set members and hitbox data. At that point, the hitbox will have the appropriate data. So when it lands, and we call take damage on the character that it landed against, we can pass that data into the function. Now let's go back to the event graph and let's do this for the projectile and throw hitboxes as well. I don't need it for proximity hitboxes. Those are the yellow ones that help determine blocking and a few other things. In my opinion, they're not required to check for crumple because I don't think they should be able to cause crumple, but you might have a case where you want that so you can add it if you want to. But the projectile and the throw hitboxes definitely might. So I'm gonna go to an example of my create projectile hitbox. Let's do any of these will work. So you can see I have my homing thunderball, which is the one that you charge up and it just goes toward the opponent. I can go to my break hitbox data here and see should cause crumple is already shown, but create projectile hitbox doesn't have the parameter for it. So I can press plus new parameter and we're gonna call this should cause crumple. We wanna move it up to right below should cause days just for ease of use and pass it in. At this point, I want to go into create projectile hitbox and I'll have this empty node that is not being used. I'm going to want to pass that into the set members and hitbox data. So I click on set members and hitbox data. I check should cause crumple. And now I have this option here. So I can make some space for it. And I can pass should cause crumple into the should cause crumple on the set members and hitbox data. Then I'm going to clean it up. And there we go. Now the projectile has the ability to cause crumple if we set it to do so in the data table. Going back to the event graph one more time, if we right click and find references through our create throw box, we can also find out where we have this one. 
and this is the same deal. This is a grab I have, and you could cause the crumple on here if you want, but you may wanna cause the crumple after the throw has actually finished. This is just the grab, so this is grabbing the opponent. If I go into my data table, I have the grab, which is right here, and then the throws damage. So backward throw hitbox one is the grab. Backward throw damage is the actual damage that I am applying to the character throughout the throw. So in my case, I throw them backward over my head. This one is the actual grab. This is after they land after being thrown. I probably want this to be where the crumple occurs. And if you want that instead of the grab, then you can search for where you're using this and notify on his backward throw damage. And I can see I have the apply throw damage enum here. And just to bring it home, we have backward throw. And it looks like this, we're throwing the character on the ground. So if we go to mutant throne, you'll see that they eventually land on their head, or on their back really, right here. And the damage is applied at this point. So once the damage is applied, once they've landed, that is when we want to cause crumple. Now it doesn't work so much with my animation, but I think you get the point. It could work with your throw. I am getting that data table row from that data table still. And I'm using that row where the damage for the throw comes in. So I still have my hitbox data here and I'm just calling take damage outright in this case. I can pass should cause crumple into the function normally and it will work. However, just to be completely thorough, if you do want to do it on the grab for any reason, that is perfectly fine. You could definitely make that work without issue. You'd want to do the same thing where you make a parameter on your create throw hitbox function called should cause crumple. And we're going to pass this up to be below the should cause days. And then I'm going to pass it into the function. Then I go into the function, create throw hitbox. And then we come into here set members and hitbox data, and I check the should cause crumble. At this point, I can pass in the parameter from here, but I wanna clean it up. That way it looks pretty nice. We're gonna pass it in without issue. And there we go. Now the grab, the damage on the throw, the projectiles, and the strike hitboxes can cause crumple. At this point, we wanna make sure that our animation works for it since we're in the animation blueprint. So I'm going to go into my default state machine. Now this is massive and we are getting a lot of states in here, but let's just focus on the ones that we actually care about. So I wanna be able to go from idle to crumple in this case. So I can right click and make a new state and call it whatever I want. So crumple. Now I already have that one and I made it right here. This state doesn't have any sort of state events on it. It is just a simple state. And if we go into the state, I have an animation mutant crumple V2. Now I had some animations that were supposed to be working with root motion off of Mixamo and my skeleton supports that, but because of the way they worked and the rotation they had, it didn't work. So I broke it up into a few different animations. You can definitely do this with just one animation. So the multiple animations I'm using here are just for ease of use and appearance on my end. But you can see this is the mutant falling to their knees. And I've set the animation not to loop. Now we wanna go from idle to crumple when we are in the crumple combo state. So drag from idle to crumple, make a transition rule. And the transition rule is literally we get our character reference, which is the owner of the animation blueprint. We get our combo state off of it. That's the current combo state of the character. And we're gonna do an equal equal enum check. And we wanna check for our crumple state. And then we wanna pass that into the result. So if we are in the crumple state, we can enter this transition. Now going back to the graph, let's look at the transition rule. There are no transition events from idle to crumple. So nothing is required there. It's a very simple transfer to a different animation. Now, that is only because my animations are broken up though. You may have a few notifies that you wanna use if you only have one animation. So let me finish going over this and I think it'll make more sense. 
So I have crumple and I have crumple fall. Crumple fall is this animation right here. So after the character was on their knees, I'm technically using one of my bounce animations. And this is essentially them falling from their knees to the ground since I'm combining those two animations. So then I have another state called crumple fall and crumple goes to this immediately. It's just automatic rule base. So once the animation for the original crumple has finished, we go into the crumple fall state. So if you make a new state and you have your animation, you can toggle looping off and this will make it to where you have two animations, one for the falling to the knees and one to the falling to the ground. But again, that's not required. If you have one animation for your crumple and it has all this, you can just have one state here. If you are doing it like I am, make sure to check the automatic rule based on sequence player in state boolean. This way, once the crumple animation finishes, it will immediately go to the crumple fall animation. There are also no transition events here. So you don't have to worry about that. Nothing tricky is going on there. And there's no events on the animation itself. Now there's one more thing I do. And this one I think is actually useful, regardless of if you have one animation for the crumple and crumple fall. And that is to go into the knockdown recovery state. The reason I do this is because we already have this animation of the character standing back up. Now, if you do have a unique animation for the crumple stand back up, then this isn't necessary either but it will make it so you don't need to add a new state if you're gonna use the same animation. So crumple, fall, or just your crumple. Either way, remember that these two states could just be one state in your game, so don't worry about that. Just know that you have some sort of crumple state here, and it should go to knockdown recovery front. That is when I have just when the character is knocked down and they can stand up on their own. Now to do this, I just have it once the crumple fall finishes, we automatically transition to the state. So it's automatic rule based on sequence player and state again. Remember I mentioned earlier that the crumple is animation dependent. So it's not a number of frames, it's just how long the animation goes. By checking this, it follows those rules I mentioned earlier. But even if you did make it based off of the number of stun frames and you change the animation speed based off of that, this would still work. So this is not going to break regardless of how you have your crumple set up. We do have two transition events on here though, and specifically we have resize to knockdown hurt box, which I'll go over in a few minutes, and end crumple. Resize to knockdown hurt box is one that we covered in a previous episode, that's why I'm only touching on that later. However, the end crumple is a new anim notify that we've added for today's episode, and essentially resize to knockdown hurt box is the start transition event. Once we start going from crumple fall to knock down, then we will trigger that. And then once we are finished transitioning and we're in the knockdown recovery front, we will go into the end crumple. So let's go into our event graph and grab this and notify. So we're going to search for end crumple and we want the event. Once we get that, we can do the logic in here, which is very simple. I'm just grabbing my character reference and resetting the combo state to be none. Now this could be a little bit too early to do this depending on your animations. So really what you'll want to do in here is anything that you want when your crumple state is finished. So you could set them into the knockdown state since that's what they're technically in. Or you could ignore this entirely. You have a lot of different options. I'm just resetting my combo state here. Right now it's a little bit repetitive and I don't actually need to do this. I'm keeping this option open in case we want to do more with the crumple in the future. So it's just a chain of three animations to make one fluid animation and i'm just doing that because again i have mixmo animations you very well may have animations that flow together better or you may have one animation that you made for this particular thing that is perfectly fine now the knockdown recovery event that i have doesn't have any events on it nothing tricky is going on in here either just an animation not set to loop no anim notifies so even if you don't have this from a prior episode, you could just add this state, add your animation in, and go to it. Either way works. It's very simple. Then lastly, knockdown recovery front to idle is this one right here. And this is also automatic rule based. So once the character is finished standing up, we just transition back to idle. This one does have an end get up logic and a notify. And I'll show you exactly what that does since I am sharing animations this does happen sometimes and it just resets the combo state and it resizes the hurt box we actually want to do these anyway for the crumple we do want to reset the combo state once the character finishes the crumple animation 
We want them to return to idle and not have to worry about being in crumble anymore once they've gotten up. A hurt box size, which we're gonna wanna do because I told you we are gonna resize the hurt boxes at the different stages of this. So even though I'm using a shared transition here and I just kind of have this by default, if you are making your crumple from scratch, you're not using all of this other stuff that I already have, you can just add this event in here. So going back to the transition rule from knockdown recovery front to idle, if you type in any text in here, it will become an anonotify. notify. So this is the end transition event. So once we have finished transitioning from knockdown recovery front to idle, we can call this event just by typing that in. And like I said, if you didn't have this from a previous episode, you can add it now. So just search for the event, which is end get up logic. We don't actually want the notify, we want the event. So end get up logic, and we want the event right here. Now I already have it, so it just brings me right here. And then from here, I just want to grab my character reference and set the combo state to no combo state or the idle or default value. After this, I'm calling this function anim notify resize the default hurt box. Now this is an anim notify that I had from earlier in the series. And we want to actually call it this time. We don't want the event. We handle the event down below. Now you might not have this, so let's go down to this one now. For this guy, we have our resize to default hurt box right here, which is just resetting our hurt box sizes and calling the uncrouch function just for a little bit of fluid movement that was all covered in the hurt box episode. Here is my resize to knock down hurt box, which I told you I would cover earlier, and we were modifying the hurt box to be the proper size during the knockdown. At this point, what we want to do is modify the hurt box to be the proper size during the crumple. And so we're going to want a new anim notify here. And to do that, we can go to the state we want to do it in. I'm going to do it in my idle to crumple start transition event. So once we begin going to the crumple animation, we call resize the crumple hurt box. Once you put that in, you can come to your event graph and type this in. And once you find the event for your resize to crumple hurt box, we can basically do the same logic that we're doing for the knockdown hurt box, which is to grab our character reference or the owner of this animation blueprint. And we can call the modify hurt box function is what it's actually called. Modify hurt box. And at this point, we can resize the hurt box at the given index. Right now, I'm just going to do the push box or the collision box. But of course, you should probably update all your hurt boxes to be exactly where you'd like them during this move. So I'm going to change some values here. I'm doing this live, so I'm not entirely sure what is going to be the best values, but we'll update it in a second. Offset it a little bit. And that looks pretty good. We will change the logic to include this crouch. We don't technically need this, but this may make it look a little bit nicer because when we crouch, we move the capsule component itself. And so the character doesn't look like they are falling through the floor as much. So let's try it out with this first. It's not super important that you understand everything going on here because this is all from the hurt box episode. So this is not new logic to this. I'm just trying to add it here. I ended up taking out the crouch because it did not make it look better. It made it look worse in that case, so I was ignoring it. And you can see I hit the opponent, and that looks pretty good. It just needs to be a little bit taller. So let's play around with the, with the values a little bit more. Make it a little bit bigger and offset it a little bit. And this ends up being a little bit too much, so it's offset too far. The size is correct, but let's just change that offset. And now we have a result that is pretty good. It could be improved, but this is acceptable for today's episode. And so that was kind of convoluted, but really the simple thing is we go from idle to the crumple, crumple to some sort of knockdown state. If you don't have it all as one animation, and then knock down back to idle. At these different parts of the animation, you can use anim notifies to change the size of your hurt box, which determines where the character can be hit. If they are on their knees, they're gonna be a little bit shorter than when they're standing, so you wanna change their hurt box so the character does not get hit when they shouldn't be. Now that all this is done with the animation, we have one more thing to do, and that is to go into our hitbox actor BP. So we go to functional BPs, hitbox actor BP, and in here we have an event or a function called check collision, and essentially we determine if we have collided with an actor 
really a character that is not the owner of this hurt box. And we check to see if it's a projectile. If it is, we do separate logic than if it is a strike or other type of hitbox. And we have different types of collision, simple and complex collision. That's all handled in other episodes. They all meet up in the same point. And then we determine what type of hitbox it is. We already handle projectile separately. And a hurt box does not damage another player, at least not yet. So we don't need to do anything with that. But we have proximity, strike, and throw. Proximity has its own function. And throw has its own logic as well. The strike hitbox, however, calls take damage. And remember, take damage now has the ability to have that should cause crumple variable passed into it. So we want to go down to our hitbox data. This hitbox data is really just a structure that I've had in my hitbox actor. It is an instance of the structure that we have in the code. And so automatically, since I've added the should cause crumple boolean to that structure in the code, right here, then it will show up in this list. And so we have hitbox data should cause crumple. I just want to pass that directly into the take damage should cause crumple. Now I've made it a little bit cleaner because it is quite messy here, but you can see it goes from crumple into crumple. And that's all that really matters. Now, additionally, we are going to want to do this everywhere that we call take damage in the hitbox actor BP because there are some other cases, like I said, if they are projectiles. The easiest way, the way I always recommend is just search for your take damage function and look through the list. The first element here is for deleted logic that I use to sometimes help people in the Discord community, so there's no reason to update it in these ones. This is just something that I had for previous episodes, so I'm ignoring them. Now, I have this take damage, which is down in my projectile logic. Long story short, because there's a ton of logic here, we check to see if this is a projectile hitbox, and if it is, and it is currently active, and it's not collided with another projectile, then we check to see if we've collided with a character's hurt box. And if we have, we will eventually call take damage. And here's the same deal as above. So in this case, I've used hitbox data and added a break node instead of just having the full node there. But really, it's the exact same thing. Just make sure that your should cause crumple pin is checked. And then you can pass it into the take damage function. There's two here because it depends on if we're using simple or complex hurt boxes, which again is just other stuff that we've done in the series. It's not something you have to worry about for the crumple specifically, but if you do have both versions like I do, you'll have two take damage calls. So we wanna make sure we pass should cause crumple into both of them. Okay, so these are the two take damages in my projectile hitboxes. And then this one at the bottom is the one we have already done in the strike hitbox. So anyway, guys, I hope this helped you make crumple in your game. And if it did, please subscribe does a ton for the channel and I just really appreciate it. I also want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon members again. Thank you guys for all the love and support. There's a link right here to check out the merch shop if you want to support the channel and also get some merch along the way. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to help you. But otherwise, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.